Having a bunch of tools and blueprints for building something specific is incredibly helpful. That's where platforms like .NET came in handy. Started as a Windows-only framework, .NET became the second most popular development platform today. It's open source, robust, and allows you to build nearly anything on any operating system. So let's look at what .NET is and outline its pros and cons. First of all, what's .NET? Well, .NET is a framework for C Sharp, F Sharp, and Visual Basic Programming Languages. Generally, .NET provides tools and reusable elements to build desktop, mobile, or web applications, and then run a single code base across multiple platforms like Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, and others. But there's more to it than that because .NET is actually a family of frameworks and other tools that form .NET Platform. So let's break out .NET Framework by components and see how it works. We'll look at all the main technologies of the platform, determine their specific use cases, and see how they interrelate with each other. As in any family, generations are like oranges and apples. The same is true for .NET. Here are the family members. The old one, called .NET Framework, and his younger brother, .NET Core. The last but not least component is Xamarin, their relative. Let's take a closer look at every component. The original .NET framework, launched in 2002, was the first implementation of .NET, providing the name to the whole platform. As the original .NET framework was meant to program desktop applications for Windows operating system only, it was very different from what it is today. Distributed as a closed source tool, the framework provided numerous libraries, reusable interface elements, and templates for application development and building APIs. Besides, developers could also make web applications with the help of ASP.NET. Basically, ASP is a framework inside of a framework, with its web page templates, patterns, and libraries which could be used to develop and run web applications and services on Microsoft web servers. While .NET Framework doesn't look like a diverse tool for a time, it became increasingly popular because of its reliability and convenience, and it's still widely used today. But it has three major problems. It supports only Windows apps, it's closed sourced, and, well, it's really old technology. With that in mind, in 2016, Microsoft released .NET Core. Core was a complete rewrite of the original .NET because it required modernization. Microsoft made the new framework much more lightweight and faster, but it wasn't the main change. The central idea of the .NET Core was cross-platform development, and that became possible by adding a whole bunch of new features and instruments. For example, ASP.NET was also rewritten for .NET Core, but now it didn't require Microsoft infrastructure to run on and could use any server. Plus, ASP.NET Core was also four times faster than its older brother. At this point, both .NET Framework and .NET Core could be used to build any type of desktop or web application. To become truly cross-platform and cover all the available software platforms, .NET needed to expand on mobile devices. This was done by adding Xamarin, a mobile cross-platform development tool to .NET Core, which brought its own runtime, application forms, and APIs, and made .NET a cross-platform development framework. Let's discuss how .NET cross-platform development works, and what developers can do with all those runtimes and frameworks versions. .NET applications work with the help of a runtime. You can think of a runtime as an interpreter because it operates in between the .NET application and operating system, making the two understand each other. So first, a runtime takes, say, C-sharp code and translates it into a common intermediate language, or CIL. After that, the intermediate language is compiled into machine code instructions, language understood by an operating system. While it sounds complicated, this approach allowed .NET applications to be launched on any operating system, 
because it doesn't matter what platform the application was written for. What does it have to do with Xamarin? As you might remember, .NET previously could only work with Windows because it only had a Windows runtime. Things changed with the introduction of Mono Runtime, which was part of Xamarin. Mono can be used to launch .NET applications on Unix operating systems like Linux or Mac, but it also worked with mobile Android and iOS platforms, as it was primarily used with Xamarin. Coupled with its improved .NET Core runtime for Windows, the framework basically allows you to write one code base and run it anywhere you want. In a pile of other improvements, like significant growth of framework performance, open source code, lightweight nature, support for microservice deployments, .NET Core seemed to be better than its predecessor in many ways. But it wasn't meant to replace the original framework yet, because there were already thousands of applications built with it. That's why both are developed and maintained in parallel, which is quite complicated. Well, yes, but things are promised to change since the release of .NET 5 on December 8th of 2020. .NET 5 is the first major release since the introduction of .NET Core. While it brings a lot of improvements, .NET 5 won't stay for long. The release of .NET 6 is planned for November 2021. The main idea behind .NET 5 is to unite all the separate .NET technologies existing under the hood of a platform. So just a quick reminder, there are three of them, .NET Framework, .NET Core, and Xamarin. Each tool includes a separate runtime, SDKs, libraries, and APIs, which makes .NET as a platform kind of bitty. With .NET 5, Microsoft is planning to unite everything in a single framework with only one runtime. So what is new? There are a couple of features. First, Core CLR Engine. The default .NET runtime, Core CLR, got a new compiler engine, which will improve the compilation speed of applications. That means the application loading time will reduce, while the overall performance will grow. Second, runtime confluence. .NET 5 provides smoother experience in using Core CLR and Mono in conjunction. That should be seen as a huge win for cross-platform development and corresponds to the idea of uniting two runtimes into a single one. And third, JavaScript interoperability. Now .NET can make use of JavaScript client-side APIs and libraries using the Blazor tool. Blazor is an ASP.NET user interface framework, which can handle JavaScript code execution on the client side. Basically, it means that .NET applications are interoperable with JavaScript. These three features are unusual for .NET 5 release but the framework inherits the .NET core direction and tries to be as cross-platform as possible. So there is no place left for the original framework, and .NET framework is expected to be deprecated in the near future. That was a long run through different implementations of the framework. First, we'll discuss the pros .NET has in its latest versions of the framework. Namely, we'll look at the improved features in .NET Core and .NET 5, and then we'll move on to the cons. The first pro is cross-platform development, and it should be considered the main feature of .NET Core, which is further extended by .NET 5. In its current form, .NET includes tools for all the major operating systems, devices, and application types. It arms developers with ASP.NET for web apps, Xamarin for mobile and Mac OS, and .NET Core for numerous desktop application types, ranging from games to machine learning services. In terms of developer experience, smooth transition between the runtimes and unified code resources will allow developers to write one code base and launch it across the platforms, and all that with minimal changes to the application. The ease of deployment and maintenance is the next point. Deployment happens when the application goes into production. The easier it is to deploy, the better for the whole team. .NET includes a number of basic features that will simplify deployment. For example, .NET has a default component isolation. This feature can be used to avoid conflicts between different versions of DLL or dynamic link libraries. DLLs can be used by multiple apps at a time. Whenever we deploy a code a different version of DLL, the application may break because of the library conflict. 
component isolation helps avoid application failures by separating newly deployed pieces of code, and it's pretty sweet. Since .NET Core 3.0, the framework supports single file applications, which basically means all the files and dependencies are packed into a single file that also supports easy deployments. Next one, lightweight nature. Since the introduction of .NET Core, the size of the framework kept reducing, while its performance continued to grow. After the release of .NET Core with its small size, it was also optimized to be used with containers and microservices. To prove the point, we can look at the benchmarks by Microsoft. .NET 5 shows 15% improvement in application performance, while the size of it reduced by 22% compared to .NET Core 3.1 version. Given its cross-platform possibilities, reliability, lightweight applications, and support from Microsoft, .NET is considered a solution for enterprises. Besides the mentioned qualities, .NET applications are considered easy to scale as the business expands, eliminating the need to reinvest in building a new application or changing the technology stack. Open source licensing can also be called an advantage as more people can engage in learning and developing the platform. There are a couple of industry examples, like Mono Runtime or Silverlight plugin for web and mobile UI, that started as open source projects, and after a while, they became a part of the .NET ecosystem. That said, let's mention the development community as another powerful advantage. With over 3,700 companies participating in its open source community, Microsoft provides various channels on Discord and Slack for mentoring, education, and issue discussion which makes the information accessible for the developers. And to finish it up, let's also mention great documentation. As it's an important part of any technology, .NET documentation is considered well-structured and filled with necessary references and examples, and that makes it a good starting point for learning and troubleshooting. But with that in mind, we should also mention the cons of .NET and discuss possible issues and solutions for them. Keep in mind that we'll mention the issues that happen across different versions of .NET and discuss how they can be addressed in the later versions. The deprecation of the original .NET framework brings the major challenge for the existing applications. But let's figure out what it actually means and what consequences it will have. According to Microsoft support policy, the deprecation of .NET framework technically means it won't be developed and updated anymore. However, it clearly states that existing apps will be supported as long as it's installed on the supported version of Windows. So in practice, it means that .NET Framework won't disappear in a day, but its libraries and tools can, especially those that already have the .NET Core alternative. What are the recommendations? Since the release of .NET Core, there was no recommended method of migration from Microsoft. There are a bunch of tools suggested by the development community like TriConvert, which is a solid support in terms of converting older components in a semi-automatic way. But at the same time, the process of migration doesn't promise to be painless. Let us know in the comments if you have to deal with migrating your .NET application. Now, we'll look at internal problems of the framework. .NET is known for having memory leak issues. This basically means the framework is prone to holding the memory it doesn't need anymore. However, the issue can be addressed by applying memory profiles and garbage collectors. Another solution is to use the dispose pattern, which tracks unused resources and automatically frees them up. Developer-wise, .NET Platform, in its current state, has a steep learning curve. This is valid because .NET presents a huge base of pre-programmed libraries that constantly change over time since Microsoft also announced that they are going to release a new version of .NET annually, this may complicate learning the framework for newcomers. But for now, this fact doesn't impact the average salary of .NET developers, as it still remains lower than Java or Python developers' average salary. Looking at these qualities, .NET remains a good fit for enterprises or medium-sized companies looking for a tool to develop on various platforms without additional hassle. The latest release promises a smoother experience for .NET users, as all separate frameworks will become a single one, but that will happen with future releases. Pay attention to this tricky detail, 
.NET 5 will be supported for three months only after .NET 6 release, planned for November 2021. And .NET 6 will be a long-term release supported for three years, which basically means the major changes are around the corner. Stay tuned.